Howdy guys, I'm Jason Lewis. You may remember me from such internet films as Jeep and Jason Does the Rubicon, or The Adventures of Ram Johnson. This time, I'm actually bringing you into the Auto Edits garage to run you through some of the gear that I use to make these videos, give you some pro tips on some settings and some techniques that I find that works. If you guys have watched this channel at all, you know, I take pride in getting some creative and fun shots. And I encourage everybody to get out and make videos and start YouTube channels or whatever platform works for you. I encourage you guys to do that. We're in a really great time technology wise that there's some amazing things uh, available to us right now, which leads me to my very first recommendation, and that is this guy right here. This is the new GoPro 9 Black, and this is not a sponsored video. I uh, actually got this GoPro right here to try it. While I was working on Joe's Jeep, this showed up in the mail. Thank you, Joe, very much. So turns out I work on Jeeps for beer, Tahoes, and GoPros. Yes, so not a sponsored deal, but I'm gonna tell you right now, this thing is amazing. It's the answer to making easy, high quality videos uh, for the internet, travel, install videos, all of that stuff. And I'll run you through some of the features of this thing, some of the techniques that I use, some of these little guys right here. I think it's funny, we're doing an inception right now. You're watching me through that and I'm watching you through the screen on the front, which is one of those cool little features of the GoPro 9. Now they copied the DJI action cam there, but I'm glad they did. Um, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not, this, this video is not about knocking or comparing this to any other camera. It's just my experience with this camera is that it's that good. Now, just like you, I watch a bunch of videos online to check out the reviews and the specs and all of that stuff. So you're not gonna get those specs from me. It has all of the megapixels and all of the things that you need. I don't know all of that stuff, don't care. I need it to record really good video. I need it to be very easy to use, durable enough, and uh, practical in my use. And it checks all the boxes there. So we'll bring you into the, uh, onto our Tahoe hood presentation here of, we have a nine, we have a GoPro eight, seven, and then all the way back to a four. So these are the things that I use. It's always great to get as much gear as you can afford. Um, you know, no one says this is cheap, just like working on four by fours and muscle cars is not cheap. Uh, you can cut corners when you can, but sometimes it's just gonna cost you to get some. So I got lucky, I scored myself a nine, and this has been amazing. So some of this video I'm gonna shoot on my Canon XF400 and that's gonna be basically my very first tip and trick on shooting some install videos. Now I wanted to kind of focus this video on the travel side and the off-road video, you know, style, the automotive style videos. But um, this right here, having a camera with a little bit of a zoom lens on it is really, really the key and helpful to doing engaging install videos because I use this as now my camera B. Uh, in, the auto, in the TV world, you have your camera A, which is the camera that the camera person presents to, and then camera B is your secondary camera, and then C, D, E, F as you add cameras. A uh, little TV lingo for you there. Um, so this is now, because my GoPro 9 is so good, this is now my B camera. <laughs> Uh, and it's just really handy to have a zoom lens. So as you see me do some installs, I'll use this to kind of punch in on, on items to give you that detail stuff. So that's what that's for. And it's kind of cool to have a little action camera become an A camera, a primary camera. So let's go on in over here and let's show you what's up. All right, so this is pretty much most of the stuff that I've been using lately. And I'll give you some of the tips and tricks that I use to help really fill out a, a video. Like, it, like basically, I'm gonna lean towards a, a road trip style video because that seems to be the most romantic vision of what people want to create on their YouTube channel. So uh, we'll lean towards that. Now, the GoPro 9 right here is our first feature. And this is basically uh, the media mod on, so on top of a, a GoPro 9. And the media mod just means that it has this little thing that lets you, it has some plugs here. So you have an audio input. So when you have a wireless microphone, you can plug that in. That's very, very handy to do, do that. And then you have USB-C. And there's one other one up here. 
uh, HDMI. So you have some pretty powerful growth to your already pretty cool little GoPro 9 right here. Now, this thing right here has the front facing screen, lots of options for that. I really like that. And if you're blogging and talking, this is really handy to have. Now you may notice that my GoPros have little tags on them with names, and that's, be, that's for something later. That's for when you're managing media and editing. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do that. I kind of dabbled with a how-to edit video a couple years ago. Um, now that I've changed editing platforms, I used to be on Avid, now I'm on Adobe Premiere, I really like it. Um, let me know if you guys want to see that. I can run you through, because that's another part of this whole making videos that gets very daunting, is managing footage and editing. So let me know, I can do it, you know, we can make that happen. But that's why I have names on them. It's just part of that process. So, you know, this one's right. And they, they're kind of fun names to me. Like this one's Alvi. That was my grandfather's actual name. Or his actual name was Alva, but my grandma pronounced it because they're from Missouri. And they call him Alvi. So that's Alvi. We got Sandy, my first dog. Uh, Goober, because Goober. And then <laughs> Ed. <laughs> So naming your cameras is not just only a fun thing to do, it's actually practical. But uh, this little media mod, it, it's expensive. I mean, I think it's another 85 bucks. So getting the GoPros, I think right now, that's kind of one of the other things that's really tricky about owning one is that there's so many bundles on the internet, even on the GoPro page. They now want you to join the yearly GoPro plus thing. Um, which is kind of cool. I don't know enough about all of those yet. So what you see here is a GoPro 9 with the media mod. It's a really nice thing. And then from there you can add on and put on wireless microphones. And that's how this, this little setup goes here. And I'm going to cover that in just a moment. But so then that will go right into the audio. So adding wireless audio to your production really steps up the level of quality and helps the viewer understand and hear you better. Here's a quick example straight away. I have a shotgun mic on the Canon over there and I have a wireless mic right here on my chest and it just sounds way more better, way more pro. And then the farther you get from the uh, camera, the better it is with the wireless mic on board. Now, let me just recommend, this is the Rode Wireless Go setup right here. So this little setup is actually really great for the money. I am have been thrilled with it. It's a hundred and, I think it's 185 or 190 bucks. Uh, again, I'll put this, in, a, a version of it in my Amazon store. And it's fantastic for this close proximity stuff. They're cheap, they're easy to use. And once you get farther away, that's when the pro level stuff really comes into play. But for all of the stuff that I've done so far, these have been a great, a great asset. And then you have two options. You have this little one right here where you see people out putting the, clipping these things on. Uh oh, a little fuzzball fell off. That's a wind sock or wind noise thing, or they call them, well, this wouldn't be a, a squirrel, it would be, or a cat, it would be something. It's much smaller caterpillar. How about that? And then these are the things you see are a microphone. Now I prefer to use an actual lavalier mic like this right here and just plug that in. This has an actual option to go both ways and that's actually very, very cool to me. So, so now you can go more pro and what I do is I just tape this, the lavalier mic underneath my shirt right here and that's it. Oh, hey, Pinto the dog shirt for Pinto. I don't know if you guys follow me over on Instagram. Um, Pinto's going in for surgery in a couple days and I'm kind of, Losing my mind about that, but uh, I think good thoughts for Pinto. She should be okay. He's getting her, her knee fixed. Um, so back on track here. Rode Wireless Go. Step up your game when you can. Get some uh, wireless audio. It'll make a difference. That's the setup that I use right here. Cheapy love thing. And the Wireless Go plugs right into your GoPro and the Media Mod. It's pretty great. Now that you know the basics of my A camera game, right there, that's it. Uh, let's let me run down through some of the older ones. Here's the GoPro 8. This one has the Media Mod as well. So you have your inputs here on the back. Those have been very happy. I've been very happy with this thing. Uh, a good example of, of me using this in the field is, so if you guys haven't watched the Jeep trip to Baja that I did with Power Stop Brakes, my buddy Chris and Camp 4 Low, uh, I think it was two years ago now in the before times, uh, 
all of the A camera stuff was right here on this guy. And that's just, if you get a minute to scan, it's a long video, but scan through that and it gives you an idea. And watching videos like that should help teach you what to do and how to do it and the techniques. Now I used, in that video, I used that, that camera right there on this little GoPro, this little GoPro stick right here. And I found it to be extremely handy. So this little tripod stick folds up, goes right in your pocket, and then you pull it out and you have a little bit of an extendable there and you have a little bit of a tripodable thing there. This thing is pretty rad. So this right here is the jam. I really love this. So go scan, watch that video and kind of, you'll get an idea of some of the techniques and you can you know, start copying some of that, but that's really cool. Then if you go back to the GoPro 7, you'll actually have to get an aftermarket housing, this little adapter from GoPro to go from USB-C to the actual mini jack. Now I have the voice command on, on the GoPro 9 and it just started over here. So uh, that's another feature. <laughs> so the voice control, as you can see, is pretty cool. GoPro, stop recording. Right, that's, that's pretty cool, that's handy. So I have the voice control off on this one, so that makes that handy. But sometimes when you have multiple on, they'll all roll or do different things. So you have to be wary of that. And it's kind of funny. The, the commands are like, sweet bro, and like it'll tag that shot. So when you land a sick jump, it has hilarious things in there. But so the GoPro 7 here. Now, if you notice, my GoPros have taken a beating. And that's one of the things that's kind of cool about the, some of the new programs that they have is that you can send them in for repairs. And I went to replace that and it's too hard. It's everything's all glued in on these things, but it still works good. So I just put a little bit of packing tape. That's the hack. Um, a little bit of packing tape on that keeps you from getting glass shards in your fingers as you use it, but still works fine. So I have a GoPro 7 for some action shots. And then I have this old school GoPro Hero 4 that I used. Um, and again, broken screen with the packing tape on it, but it does the job. And I put this one, uh, case in point, that lives in this housing sometimes on this little arm. And that's how I get some shots. And you'll just see this right here recently, me dragging it off on a concrete block or a rock uh, on the back of the truck. So these are, they're gonna take some abuse. So just kind of have it in your head that sometimes getting rad shots is gonna cost breaking GoPros. Uh, here's a shot of me getting rad with the truck. Um, that's how I broke this GoPro. So it's gonna happen, getting rad video shots is going to break GoPros. Part of the cost of getting awesome. Now let's cover some of the mounting things here. Now the suction cups are the go-to for me. Here's uh, and now the brand that I like the most because they're just the most durable and, and stable. It's the Fat Gecko Single and Dual. And these are by Delkin, I think is the, the brand name. And the Single and the Dual, these right here. Again, I'll put as many of these on the auto edit store uh, so you can at least shop there. You, know, you don't have to buy them. It would help me uh, if you're gonna get them, but if not, it'll give you a starting point and a place to look at the product description. So the single and the duals, these are fantastic for getting those side mounts and getting some, all of these action shots. I got this little extension here and getting the camera far away from the vehicle gives you a little bit better perspective, a little bit more uh, of a, a cool, engaging view. Uh, this is my old school Noga arm. This junk right here is very expensive. You can see as I've knocked it off a few times, I've broken it. <laughs> so that used to have a knob to tighten, but I still use it. And this is what's called a Mafer clamp. And this is a movie thing, very heavy, heavy duty. Um, they're expensive. So what I'm trying to do now is learning how to implement some of these other things over here, like these arms and these clamps. Now I'll put these also in there. And here's an interesting study that I did on Amazon. So I saw two of these clamps. They looked very similar, different brand names. Uh, this one actually had some other accessories, which was nice, and a little GoPro mount here. And this one was $14.95, this one was $25.95. So I thought, huh, let's test this. So I ordered both. They're obviously the exact same product. This one just has a sticker from this other company and they charged me another $10. So this one will be on <laughs> my Amazon page right here. And these are rad. So you have a little clamp so you can get, you know, fenders, uh, bumper edges, trailer hitches, things like that for those cool undercarriage shots, suspension mounts. So you would just mount your GoPro right to there and put the screw in like that. And that's how you would get that shot. So that's the basics of the gear and the stuff that I use to catch the main stuff. Now here's the other item that I really love to just have added to my thing. And this is the DJI Mavic Mini. 
Um, it's a couple years old now, but it does the job. Just utilize what you get. And it's funny, I actually got that. I traded Chris from the Baja trip. Um, let's see. Oh, my dri driving simulator. I had a pretty radical driving simulator, but I'm all grown up now. And so I was like, oh, I need a drone. And he was like, I need a driving simulator. I have this drone. So there you go. Traded that for that. That's how I added that to the gear, work on Jeeps for GoPros. And there you go, do what you can, you know? I mean, you gotta make it work somehow. <laughs> so let's jump in the driver's seat of the Tahoe here and then I'll explain a few of the settings that you would want to maximize different scenarios. So we'll run through that. Okay, so for a quick tutorial on what I think is the best interior shot, it's, I, I actually come up with, with some of this stock GoPro stuff that they have in the kits and these little articulated arms and then a little sticky mount to the windshield and I have something that pretty much works in all of my vehicles. So now we have our dashboard mount camera. So you just kind of frame it up. I have the GoPro app, that's obviously very handy. And then you would just frame it up I like getting a little bit of wheel here. And there we go, we're looking pretty good. So now from here, this is the setting. So I'm gonna stop rolling on this one here so I can show you the setting that I recommend. Now, when you're driving in the car, here's this fun little thing that you, you don't think about until later. These come with this amazing hyper smooth. I'm gonna do a quick demonstration of that after we get out of here. Um, but when you're mounted to a vehicle, when I see that in hyper smooth on a vehicle and it and it's stabilizing, to me it takes away, especially in an off-road scenario, it takes away from the impact and the actual accentuation of what the vehicle and what you're doing. So I'm gonna give you two examples. So first off, let me show you what I mean. So inside here, you would go to your settings inside your inside the app here, and you would go to hyper smooth and just turn it off when it's there. Here's a shot of me driving the truck the other day that I left the hyper smooth on and you could see the camera as it wanders around and it makes it look all smooth and nice. And now there's a time for that. I'm not saying never do any of these things or never do this. It's for the most part, I think the technique looks better this way. And then in a certain instance, yes, I would use that. Wow. All I'm doing is just feathering the brake and making the tires grab a little bit. Oh, this thing is fun. Holy mackerel. <laughs> now, in the way that I think it would look better is when I took the, the Tahoe, this vehicle out a couple days ago, up the wash and went off-roading in this thing. I left, I had the hyper smooth off and I wanted you to see me bouncing around and, and have the, via, the camera be attached to the vehicle solidly to show what the vehicle's doing to the humans. So I think that that's a cool thing. All right, so for the hyper smooth, so when you're doing your little handheld selfie shots right here, you wanna have something that has that stabilization. All of that takes the vomitiness out of all of this movement stuff, so you wanna be cool. But here is what the GoPro 9 has, not just a really good, the latest version of the hyper smooth and uh, whatever, it has automatic horizon leveling. Now where the automatic horizon leveling will come into play, not necessarily for the walk and talk. I don't think that it really needs that. Some of that you want it to be organic, but the horizon, automatic horizon leveling comes into play when you set it up on your tripod to do your like, you know, install or your like home mechanic stuff. It will just, you just get it close and then it will auto level for you. That's kind of cool. To me, that has proven to be very nice instead of having to like make sure everything's perfect, especially when you have just a, a cheaper tripod like I have there. Um, it's nice to have that ability inside there. So it's another feature that is proving to be one of those, like once I learned about it, I was like, holy mackerel, where's this been all my life? So that's pretty cool. All right, so we're down at the back of the Tahoe and this is kind of one of the go-to shots for me as an off-roader. You come back here, I wanna get the axles, the rear suspension doing its job. So I'll just grab the trailer hitch here with our new little clamps. Really like these things. They're lightweight, they seem to grab just good enough. And then I will go in here and I'll let you see the video as I, sh as I frame this up and I think right about there. Now you can go, this, this shot right here 
is as brave as you wanna be, because now you just have to remember as a driver that you now, your low hanging fruit, so to speak, is this thing right here. Now I've bumped it, it's gonna happen. Um, so you just have to kind of keep that in mind, but you can now see that you have both tires in frame right here to get some of the action of you getting red. And there you go. So that's a good example of how to use the clamp to frame this up. And another tip really quick, as you go to, we'll cover this more in the editing one, is that none of these shots should be used for any extended amount of time. Like they're, they're there to give you a bit of action and a bit of, uh, you know, some something that happens, an event, and then you cut away to something else. So that's the trick, is to get as many as you can to really spice up your video. So let me show you a suction cup of application. All right, so now for the traditional exterior GoPro shot. Now you have to be uh, a little more specific about when you're using your suction cups, but look at this. Side markers, things like that. You just wanna make sure that you get a good bite. I always like try to test it. Again, I've had suction cups come off. It's gonna happen, <laughs> but you just do your best and then here we go. We'll just put this out here. Now this is the extended arm for the Fat Gecko mount here and we'll just line it up here. I need my glasses because I'm an old man. And this gets you off. So getting this little bit of extra oomph gets you a little bit of better view here. So there you go. And then this shot right here will get you the tire going in and out, uh, you know, turning left and right, spinning, all of that stuff. And again, when you add all these shots together, you're making yourself a really dynamic and fun video. That's kind of the goal. So there you have it. There is the basic rundown of the gear that I've been using to create the content that you guys find here on my channel. Now, hopefully that inspires one of you guys to get out there, order a camera, anything you can get your hands on, get out and do the video. There's room for all of us to make videos and express ourselves. I, I find this very, very valuable uh, and important to me to do this and share these things with you guys. Let me know if you would want to see the more procedural stuff of like how in the field I shoot a travel video. Not very many people watch those, so I don't know if I'm a good person to give you that advice. I know it works for me, um, but I can also show you guys how to edit them. I could do a more procedural on how to manage the footage, all of that stuff, so let me know. Thank you guys so much for being here and subscribing. Uh, make sure to share and like this video. Leave me a comment down below and say howdy. You good girl? <laughs> oh, we get a good tail wag. Send good thoughts for Pinto's surgery coming up here in the next couple of days. And until next time, enjoy your drive.